So hello, welcome everybody to our Women in Football session. It's our very latest webinar. We're very grateful to everybody, all our members, for all your support on all the sessions that we've been doing on a variety of topics. We had so many great um, messages of, of feedback telling us that you're enjoying the sessions that we're putting on. So make sure that you do check your emails on a regular basis so that you do know exactly what it is that we're doing. Sometimes they can get a little bit lost if you if you maybe save the email for later and think you'll you'll have a look at it. But do just scan through to see the different sessions to make sure that you're not missing out on, uh, on a, a number of fabulous topics. We set up the webinars in response to the COVID crisis, and we hope that you're going to continue to find them inspiring and informative as well. And we will be carrying on with a series for the foreseeable future because it seems to work well, bearing in mind we have people from all over the country and, and all over the world in some circumstances and not everybody uh, can get to a venue at one particular time. So do email us on events at womeninfootball.co.uk if you have any other topics for any seminars that perhaps we haven't covered yet or maybe it was a little while ago and you missed one that you'd definitely like us to cover again. So that'd be very useful. Now, I'm particularly excited about this session because it is a topic extremely close to my heart. Um, I am going to be a guest panellist, which is quite funny, really, because I'm not really going to be the one with the solutions. I might have a couple of suggestions, but I'm going to be one of those people who will be posing a lot of the questions um, because it's very difficult uh, having any kind of work-life balance in the most random of um, careers, such as journalism full stop, and sports journalism in particular for fairly obvious reasons and working in football and having a couple of kiddies as well thrown into the mix. So we ask ourselves, can we have it all? Mm, I think that's unlikely, but maybe some of you think that we can. How do we juggle motherhood if we have children, uh, families, commitments, partners perhaps with a career in football that is ideally vaguely, vaguely successful? Is there such a thing as work-life balance? Has the pandemic made it harder for working women? Has it made it easier perhaps because maybe our other halves have been around a little bit more and, and seen how tricky it has been and they want to have more um, to do with home life and they want to have a greater say in home life. Now to try to help us to answer some of these questions and more, we have a rather marvellous uh, panellist, uh, host in fact, Reshmin Chowdhury. She's a multilingual sports journalist, a broadcaster, she hosts various events. She works for BT Sport, as I'm sure you're aware. We'll have seen her on um, many, many different uh, programmes, women's football. She's on TalkSport, the BBC, of course, as well. Presents Premier League football on TalkSport every Saturday. Works across football coverage for BT Sport, UEFA Champions League, Europa League, Women's Super League. Tell us what you don't work on, Reshmin. I'm not too sure. <laughs> show, everything. Uh, <laughs> Centre of major events, including the best FIFA football awards as well and the Champions League draw and was named recently by UEFA as one of the most influential people in football. So take it away, Reshman, and tell us all why we're getting it all wrong. <laughs> You're asking me, Jackie. Thank you very much. Thank you, Women in Football. I'm so delighted to be an ambassador for Women in Football as well. So I'm so happy that you asked me to be here today to host the session. Um, as many of you will know, as Jackie has just been saying, look, I'm a mum as well who works in football. I've also been quite vocal. Only recently, though, I'd have to say, and that's something that we will come on to. It's um, something I've been talking about recently, about my journey and why I think we just all need to come together and talk about this work-life balance, because as Jackie rightly said, we work in, in an industry where we don't really have real jobs. You know, we do, but we don't. We work in a completely random industry. We don't know what's coming up within the next week. We don't know where we're gonna be sent. Um, and navigating your personal life around that isn't always easy. Um, and the other thing I want to say is that, you know, everyone on the panel today who you're about to meet, um, including Jackie, of course, we are all mothers. Funnily, we just we were saying before that we all have two children, a boy and a girl each, I believe, all of us. Um, so, you know, we do have different layers of responsibility that we add to our normal lives and our jobs as well. But, you know, obviously we don't want to alienate anyone who isn't a mother just because you're not you don't have children. It doesn't mean that you're not struggling with a work life balance. Our industry is brutal if you're single because you're trying to navigate all of that without that extra mental support and that you know kind of the people the family love around you or you have dependents or whatever it might be or you might be young and you don't have children and you're wondering well can I have children and do this job I mean we're hopefully going to shed a bit of light on 
whether it's on oh, the fact that we we are examples of people who can do it but it's whether we've sort of struck that balance and how we can i don't know make it easier for for ourselves and um other people as well in the future so um we've got a great panel for you and without further ado i'm going to start by introducing um everyone who's on it so you've already met jackie and i'm sure you all know jackie but uh rachel brown finnis uh is there hi Hi, Luke. Nice wave. Uh, former goalkeeper, of course. She played for England more than 80 times with top WSL sides as well, Liverpool women and Everton ladies. Uh, she qualified for the Women's Euros in 2001 and 2005. She, uh, that was the FIFA Women's World Cup as well, 2007. Two years later, she became one of the first female players to be given a central contract by the FA. So that was, I mean, as many of you will know, a groundbreaking moment for women's football in this country as well. She's hung up her boots since, but she's worked in the media as a pundit, as a co-commentator. She's also an ambassador for UCFB, the uh, university campus of football business. Uh, she's regularly regularly on BT Sports School, the women's football show. She writes a weekly column as well on the WSL with The Guardian. So, Rachel, I'm going to start with you, first of all. I mean, your situation is quite unique in that you have two you know, very young children as well, but your partner... He travels for most of the year and you have quite a busy schedule. So how do you manage it? Yeah, that's right. After we had our uh, first child, Zara, who's now five and at school, um, he changed jobs. And so originally um, he was pretty much nine to five. And then when she was nine months old, he buggered off on this whole career. That, um, <laughs> how dare he? And um, he's now a caddy on the golf tour. So he works with a player and he's, yeah, as you said, everywhere but here for, I'd say, 40 weeks of the year. Um, so you're right. You know, I was in the, the very beginning of my new career after football, after playing football. And to be honest, I was quite content that I'd had a big chunk of, of our relationship, me and, me and Ian together, um, was me being away. Uh, and so I totally was 100% behind his, um, the opportunity he got to go off and pursue his dream career. Uh, and for me to kind of, I'd, I'd, I'd had that selfish time or that time where it's 100% about football, 100% about me. Uh, and I was quite comfortable with letting him do his thing and also putting my career uh this this impending this pending career um a little bit on the back burner that wasn't and, and for my focus to be on children if i'm being honest um i didn't expect to particularly be juggling um the career that i have in media currently with children because i'd sort of almost made a pact with myself and a pact with um my husband that you know not that my career was done but i was quite happy for that intensity to drop uh, for us to spend time together and to have that focus on the children. But I have to say, I feel really proud and very much in control of my career as it stands. Um, being able to devote as much time as I do to looking after the children, like you said, being on my own most of the time, just got it figured out. Um, I pretty much try and restrict my work to two days a week so that I still can strike that priority towards you know what is looking after the kids and and everything that comes around that and and not just out of duty but because I really want to enjoy that time no fantastic okay Rachel so I'm going to move on to our next panelist who is a I love reading this out right five time <laughs> British British athletics champion and a hundred meter Olympic finalist Jeanette Quache. Now she's a uh, like uh, Rachel actually. She's transitioned to being a journalist and broadcaster, and she's doing amazingly. She's a regular on the BBC, Sky Sports, and Channel Five as well. She's anchored the World Athletics Championships, World Swimming Championships, Ta Taekwondo World Championships as well, um, and the BBC Women's Football Show. She regularly hosts across Five Live as well. In 2020, she became the black of the first black female UK TV presenter ever to host a boxing production on one of the country's five main channels, which is amazing. So flying the flag. And she was also announced as the host of the weekly long hour show, the women's sports show on BBC Radio London. And she co-presents alongside Ian Wright on his uh, really popular podcast, Wrighty's House. Jeanette, I know, you know, you and I have had so many conversations about it in the <laughs> early days as well, when our children were, were both very young on how on earth do you strike this balance? We were talking before that you've, you know, I mean, our hours are all crazy, aren't they? You On the boxing particularly, you're doing 
overnights as well with two young children. How do you manage it all? Yeah, I don't. I don't manage it. I'm not <laughs> sure why you didn't ask me to come on this uh, webinar. I don't have much advice. I'm just here for everyone else to listen in. I'm joking. I'm not. Um, <laughs> Essentially, you know what it is, Reshmin. I think that um, when we think about our kids, I know Rachel and I, we were pregnant at the same time with our, with our first um, with our first child. So our babies are going on towards six years old now. And um, my second is two. So combined age of, of seven. So it's, 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 it's tough. But at the same time, I do remember in the early days, like you said, Reshmin, speaking to both you, Rachel and Jackie, and just saying, like, how do you manage it, you know? And I, I, I always made mental notes of some of the things that you guys would say because I thought this is virtually impossible to be able to do this. And it is that it's about speaking to women that are in the industry and just seeing how they're able to cope and manage because all of our circumstances are unique. All of our circumstances are different, but there will be nuggets that you can take away and think, oh, okay, let me try that. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, my husband's been at home for the last uh, 14 months um, working. We converted our little box room into an office slash studio slash dumping ground. I was going to say uh, junk room as well, surely. Yeah, it, it's horrendous. <laughs> so he, he, he's in there at the minute and I do all my um, broadcasting from home in that room as well. So he's in there. He's not been back in the office. I'm trying to get him to go back, but he won't go. So I'm just <laughs> Like, can you just leave, like, just go. But in the, during the day, um, now my, my son's back at school and my daughter's um, got a childminder. But I'm going to um, take a bit, give you some practical things that I did. Um, when I spoke to you, Reshmi, I remember really early on, you were, I said, how do you manage? Because the babies are so small. You had two and I had the one. And you go, oh, yeah, I, I, I work with au pairs. Sometimes I go and get an au pair. And I'm like, au pair? what's that? I've never even thought of that. So I went to Google, I had a quick Google and I thought, oh my God, this might work. So very recently we embarked on that journey and we were really, really lucky to find an absolutely incredible au pair. She's with us now and she's from France and it's not, it doesn't always work out. Mm, that. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So, you know, we might get into it later, but it doesn't always work out, but we've had to go and get extra help. Like I've got my mum mm. and my dad who are unbelievable. My brother and sister, extended family are unreal but um as the pandemic kind of hit my mum and dad um they went to Ghana they said right we're off so they left and I was like you're my primary school to childcare you can't leave and they're like oh we've got to go we want to go and live our lives which is fair so they've gone and um we had to kind of figure it out amongst ourselves as a family how we'd make it work so there's been a there's been a few you know ups and downs but we we're on a journey in making this work and um yeah I, I do feel like as the summer comes towards I've got a really super busy summer with the Olympics coming up that's going to be another test actually just to see how how we manage that yeah and same here actually I, I'm sort of looking at the summer and thinking how on earth am I going to make it work which is sort of what we normally do we just tear our hair out and just think how on earth is this going to happen um and now our next panelist as you know she's already self-proclaimed panelist Jackie Oatley MBE Love that. Sports broadcaster, journalist, commentator, you all know her from ITV, Sky, the BBC. She's most definitely a trailblazer. She was the first ever female commentator on Match of the Day. She's also an FA qualified coach, an ambassador for women in football and a committee member of the Football Writers Association. She was the UK's first female darts presenter covering PDC tournaments on ITV4 and then on BBC's uh, flagship sports news radio show Sports Week on BBC Radio 5 Live. She was the first female to do that as well. Um, as well as Match of the Day, she fronted final score for the BBC, the Football League show and World Football Focus as well. And uh, she also hosts football and darts for ITV Sports, including live international uh, events and tournaments. Um, Jackie was awarded an MBE in 2016 for services to broadcasting and diversity in sport. And it was really a recognition of her work behind the scenes to sort of champion the role of women working in football as well as women's football in itself. Um, and Jackie, you've done all of this as well, at the same time as raising uh, children. I think some of this was before kids, some of this was after kids. Um, how have you found the juggle, especially, you know, and something Jeanette and I talked about when we went to Rio, didn't we, when we went for the Paralympics, how do you manage those big international events when you're away from your children for prolonged periods? Yeah, and I'm conscious that not everybody on this um, webinar will have children and yeah. probably not everybody wants children. I'm also 
probably aware that there are quite a few that don't have them that are thinking, how on earth am I going to do this job if and when I do have children? So hopefully we'll be able to cater for everybody. But just on the children front for now, uh, because there are other issues with work-life balance away from having children. Um, in terms of that, we've never had an au pair or a nanny and we have no family to help. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Um, in terms of the au pair or nanny situation, that is a choice that some people make and I absolutely see why. And that would have been a great solution for us, but my husband just didn't want to have anyone in the house. So that was out the window. So it wasn't an option for that reason. If you did, in terms of major tournaments in particular, wow, that would be an absolute godsend. But we chose not to go down that route. Um, so it just involved lots of planning. And one of the things that I would say to bosses who may be worried that their staff or people who work for them are going to have children and think oh you know are they going to be less committed oh my goodness it has made me so much more organized being a mum so much more because as well as all the prep that I've had to do for these events particularly as a commentator when there's just so much prep um as well as that I've had to plan every single day of my children being um you know, at school or preschool as, as they were because I've done tournaments since since they were born pretty much every summer doing men's and women's and so it's been a case of and this is going to get straight to my top tip basically for parenting and, and how you manage with childcare is to find your own childcare person who may not already be a childminder so for example when I moved to this house which was down the road from our old one need to get a new childminder I spoke to a neighbour who happens to know everybody in the village and said, can you tell me all your recommended childminding friends? Went to see them and I was doing some work at the time that had I didn't know what hours I was going to be working. As it happened, uh, they biffed me off while I was having a baby without telling me a week before the new season started, um, which was nice. And um, so that was quite helpful because I didn't actually have to use a childminder on that occasion. But as it's worked out, I turned somebody who was an after school care provider picked children up from school fed them you know looked after them but wasn't a qualified childminder turned her into a childminder and that's been the best thing I've ever done because now she's taken her Ofsted qualifications and is just the most wonderful person she's one of these people that if you're running late it's no problem she's got her own kids at home and um, and when she suddenly said that she didn't want to work Fridays which a lot of childminders don't I then turned my little boy's best friend into our Friday childminder and paid her the same <laughs> as a childminder. So that's two major solutions found just through research. And as journalists, we all know the benefits of research. <laughs> so so really, that was it. So when I went to major tournaments, I didn't want my children to miss out. Unfortunately, they've never been clingy because they've always been used to going to friends or going to childminders. And, and that's a huge benefit to this type of work is your children do tend to grow up a bit more independent and able to go to different people. That, that's been huge. Um, but I would plan every single day that I was away of which childminder or family friend or whoever they were going to on each day. And they loved it because it was a real bonus for them. Then it was really exciting. They got to go to their friends' houses. And of course, friends were more than happy to help. So that's the way around it planning organization, iCal, we use Apple products. So iCal shared diary with my husband yeah. and I let my mum in as well. So she can just see what we're up to on a given day without having to text. <laughs> what are you doing today, darling? And, uh, <laughs> and that's how we've done it through research, word of mouth, getting lovely, lovely local people um, to have our children. And, uh, and also I have to say, having a, an incredibly hands-on husband has been mm. a real, real benefit. I couldn't do it without him. Mm, yeah he works full time but yeah yeah but he is very hands-on I remember you were saying once um yeah I suppose look, I'll just give my own experience very quickly I've you know since I would say this all the juggle began for me about seven years ago when I started working with BT Sport doing the European football and um I I can honestly say I wasn't really given the full details of what the job would entail at the start it was just I oh, would love you to report on the Champions League it was great you know I wasn't going to turn that down but and I was already you know doing something else with BT anyway so they offered me that um but I really wasn't fully aware of the fact that I would be away for prolonged periods of time and when I say prolonged you know a Monday to a Friday is a prolonged period when your children are two or three or two and three rather that was how old they were at the time and um and it would have you know every couple of weeks so it was incredibly difficult for me to juggle it because you know I wanted to do a good job I was very much focused on it but at the same time um I kind of I always felt that I 
I just it wasn't all clear to me at the start how grueling that would be and you you know like I say you could... ah, love that it's lovely seeing you we'll be home more. oh hello <laughs> hi we Delos, that is, but hi <laughs> lovely seeing you too brilliant love it <laughs> I have no idea who that is but um no fantastic so that's what I'm so my experience was you know doing this on a regular basis every few weeks and um like you said you know I had an au pair or had several au pairs who were good and bad they, they're sort of helpful in that they're there but not necessarily always helpful in that their roles are limited in what they could do so I relied very heavily on family so my mum and my my mother-in-law were both there all the time and I honestly think that if I had to if I had to pay for the level of childcare that I actually needed for my children at that time there'd be no point in me working I mean there's no way I was paid enough to be able to afford the level of childcare that I was needed I found it sort of um the travel as well of course because you know we all travel for our jobs I found that those stints very difficult because I would come back and I'd be absolutely exhausted but then as a mother you always have mum guilt and you feel that you want to give 100% to them so I felt like I was always playing catch up never really kind of um yeah never really rested or just stopped to to take stock of the situation of course it's it's you know been great and it's been you know led to good things but when I look back <clears throat> if I'm honest I wish I was able to talk to my bosses at the time and I don't think my bosses uh, created an environment where I could I don't think it was possible to to turn things down or say look I'm sort of struggling with this a little bit could you help me out because I knew that at that time if I did that I would probably have the opportunity taken away and it would go somewhere else so that's the kind of thing I think I was sort of fighting with at the time but something that I, I can't remember who said it I think uh, Rach you said the selfish time that you had the selfish time when you were playing and now it was up to your husband to have his and a lot of men who work in this industry as well have similar troubles I personally think that being a mother you have a different layer um but I think um whether you're a parent or not I think our industry is very selfish in the sense that the whole world has to revolve around you and your schedule so I just wondered if any of you ladies agreed with that Rach yeah yeah sorry I'm oh, sorry, Jackie. Rachel. I was, no, I was just going to say, I think, I mean, Rachel's fascinating in this case because her husband's here, there and everywhere. But I think mm. for people who are thinking of, of having children, um, I think if one of you has regular hours, that's really, really helpful. Re if you don't have family around the corner, a lot of people have their mums around the corner, which is amazing, in which case it's sort of either or. But um, I would say that, um, yeah, if one of you has regular hours, sort of Monday to Friday and can be flexible, then the other one as long as you have that verbal agreement with the benefit of communication, you have to talk about this, you have to verbalize it and make sure that the other one's happy with it, then uh, then at least you can be a little bit more here, there and everywhere. Sorry, carry on, Rach. No, it's fine. I've forgotten the question you asked me, Reshman, sorry. Yeah, it was just about, you know, our industry being quite selfish and whether you agreed with that or not, because the world revolves around what we do because of our schedules, which are, you know, which are changing all the time. Yeah, no, I would completely agree with that um because when uh, certainly for me being up north a lot of uh, jobs are london centric so when it is you know when i commit to a job generally i'm away for the whole weekend or i'm away from you know pre wake up time with regards to the kids to you know overnights or or beyond them being in bed so it is kind of if i say yes to a job i have to have the full um it, i'm 100% gone uh, there's no kind of, well, what if it's like, I'm gone, simple as that. Um, and so I'm fortunate that as, as Jackie mentioned, um, to have my husband's away all the time, which is fine. And what, but what I do have is my mother-in-law who has pretty much assumed the role of um, main child carer. And she is almost, can, she's quite, she's been more than happy to pretty much be at our disposal whenever we need her. Uh, I mean, that's as good as an au pair, uh, but better because she doesn't have to live with me because that would drive me insane. Um, uh, but I agree with the, the selfishness or, or that kind of intensity. It, it's 100% in. And I think our industry, you can't do it unless you're 100% in. 
and that includes the you know i call it like pre-match stuff so you prep mm. you research when you're actually there at the events and then sort of beyond that um as well once once i'm back i'm 100 being into a mum but then when it's kind of prep time for the next event it is it, it's just kind of that's how it is to be fair my kids are, are great they understand you like i'm on this work call now um and um my little boy is he's only two but he understands if if i'm doing my work then they're great they don't badger me i've been able to kind of help them recognize that that we this is how this bit of mummy needs to be uh, and pretty much any other time then you can you can have me all of the time uh so yeah I've trained them up i think pretty well I, and i'd agree with what jackie said about uh, both of my kids i would say have become really independent from being left at someone's house for a week um going away to tournaments uh when i've been and done world cups and euros as a in a media capacity um gone and, and my parents have come and you know been in france or holland and you know traipsed around the country to different venues and i've not seen them for sort of 10 12 days it's great I, i've seen especially my daughter is it like a, a young independent woman uh, who, who refuses to let me help her with anything uh, but that is because she's confident and a pretty rounded individual because of i guess having to having to kind of adapt and and be comfortable and confident in in lots of different situations that other young kids maybe haven't been in so i feel quite i feel quite proud of that to be fair mm, no absolutely look i i spoke about you know my journey quite recently on on radio and there was you know some of the responses that i got were from you know football fans who maybe don't understand the the way that we work i think i honestly think some people just think you're just teleported to a game and you're paid to watch Champions League football and why on earth are you complaining? Um, don't men have the same experiences? Um, Jeanette, do you think that with the jobs that we have that it is harder on women working in sport than it is for, for the men? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think without a shadow of a doubt, and I think men need to realise that as well. And I think the reason why I say that is because is we, we don't have the equality in the space that, that, that we require to feel comfortable enough to be able to a turn down jobs or speak to employers and have them understand the situation and until we're in that place is when I feel like there will be a level of um, equality among men and women that are both working working in sport and um, when, when I think about having that conversation with an employer or with, a, a, with somebody who's come along and said, right, we need you for this amount of time, they themselves have had to ask them a question about whether or not that, whether or not we are right for it because we've got kids. That's the reality. They would have had a mental note, oh, she's got two kids, this might be hard. Then you instantly want to put them at ease and say, okay, don't worry about that, we'll make this work. Yeah, which, which is what I did. And it was yeah, and for it another works the other way. It, it goes the other way sometimes. It, it, does. it hurts and you the honest, other way. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm, I'm sure every single one of us here has made that decision knowing that actually this is probably going to be really tough, but I really want to do this. And you think you say yes, and you think, all right, we'll, we'll work out how to make this work. I've done some crazy stuff. Like my kids are tiny. I've done some really crazy things, but it's worked in my favor. And I've luckily enough had the support to be able to make that work. So after having my daughter, um, I didn't take maternity leave with my children. That's that's the reality. I didn't take any hard leave. So after having my daughter, um, six weeks, I was back in, I was in Switzerland and I took her with me. I took her and my mum with me to the gig in Switzerland, you know, and it was like, it's fine, it's only three days, we did what we needed to do. I was full of milk, you know, on this stage whilst I was hosting. Yeah. But I knew like it was a gig I really, really wanted to do. I did it, came home. And then you you take that time out, you, you be kind to yourself. I think that's what's important yeah. that you, that when you're scheduling all of these things, you schedule in time for yourself. Very, very easy when you become a mum or you've got other care commitments wherever that you literally forget your own self. And that's important because you can't be your best self or be your best mum if you haven't had the time and taken the time to do you. So set those boundaries, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That's really, really important. So if I think for a lot of people that are maybe listening in and wondering, oh, how am I, how am I going to be able to do it? Especially if you're a new mum. I've seen a couple of new mums in the chat saying oh you know i've got a brand new baby this is the best time because when they get older 
and all of this starts, that's when you'll be running out the house, I promise you, like <laughs> running away from the kids to get away and to do your work. But at the same time, is them understanding, just like you said, Rach, that this is mummy's time. She needs time to be able to prep and to do things and to kind of juggle that time as well. But then one more thing before I um, go back, Rach, is we've been speaking a lot about kids, like Jackie said, and there'll be people here that are not interested in having the children, but you've got a relationship that you need to maintain. That's really important as well. You have to take time out. If you care about that relationship enough, take time out to make sure that that is also a priority because it's really, really easy for all of those things that surround you as a person to fall by the wayside because we're so focused on doing a good job. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And that's exactly what it is. It, and that's what it, what it all boils down to. And there's an interesting one from Jo Tung here, obviously with women in football, but she sent a great question. And that is, how do you balance being CEOs of a household, which we all are, with the demands of the job, as we've all been talking about, but also the constant flow of WhatsApps and emails, because our jobs are not nine to five. We we get messages through at, you know, at midnight from people work wise. Jackie, how do you cope with that? Oh, funny you should ask. And, and Joe knows <laughs> I struggle with this because I tell her that it, it is my biggest, biggest issue. And I am all ears for any of you guys on the um, on the webinar, if you want to message in your solutions, because even before I had children, I was a bit weird in that I would just watch football the entire time and prep the entire time. So I changed career at the age of 27. And from that moment onwards, it was just football, sport, absorbing everything, partly because it's my all consuming passion. I just live it. I breathe football news and sports news. I just want to know everything that's going on. So I want to know it. But then when it's your job as well, how do you balance it? And, and my problem is the fact that it's not just work. I absolutely love doing prep for matches. If I've got a match on a Saturday and I go, oh, prep time, that, that's the dream. But I have to wade through all manner of nonsense. And I get emails all the time. I get a couple from a student, uh, maybe a couple of emails from students a day, a couple of requests a day for help with things. And I'm, my husband tells me off all the time, but I just really struggle to say no to those things where I can say no to work, but I struggle to say no to helping people. It's just, it's human nature, right? So then that's the problem. And I get direct messages. Can you do this? Can you host that? Can you do this as a favor? And, and I find that all my time has been taken up by doing favors for people in a way and doing things that aren't actually doing my prep and doing my actual job so for example on on Saturday the weekend I didn't have a match on Saturday but I did on Sunday so what did I do I spent all of Saturday doing prep while absorbing the last day of the the AFL season in two different sessions which was a nightmare and I had um, flashscores.co.uk up with the goals as they went in before they even got on Soccer Saturday because I wanted to know before they got on from all around Europe so you see I've got a bit of, bit of a problem here with my work-life balance. <laughs> Heat um, might be the word <laughs> yeah, in yeah. a nice way. <laughs> so, uh, yeah so I'm, I'm genuinely terrible at it and, and I've actually spent a morning last week of working you know on online looking up work-life balance tips because and also time management because I have to so I, I deleted Twitter off my phone it lasted a day because I'd missed some direct message I needed um, so I put it back on um, but yeah I need to better compartmentalize my time so I'm very very bad at it and I've just worked out today that I need to get up and do yoga or something in the top room instead of waiting for the kids to get up and come downstairs. I can get it done before breakfast and then I don't have to do it after the school run and then I can start my prep because at the moment my admin and, and you guys, if you're freelance, know um, admin can take over and invoicing I haven't done for ages. And I think I'm the only one out of the four of us that doesn't have an agent. So I don't have any kind of filter in between. So people come directly for me and can you do this? And I think, oh, I don't know, is that the right pay? Or they won't say what pay it is. Um, and so that takes up headspace and I have no filter in between so maybe I should get an agent that might help um but yeah that is something that I I, I do struggle with and um I don't have set time so I'd be interested if, if you guys Rach how do you manage to switch off when's your when's your kiddie time and when's your prep time I was just going to say I think I think through balancing football alongside work when I was playing for such a long time I think I am very good at time management um, with regards to if it's 7.58, I've got two minutes to chill, 
faff around, look on Twitter, because at eight o'clock I start whatever I've decided I need to start. And I'm very disciplined in doing that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll stay in bed until a certain time, whatever it might be, and I'll get up at that time. I'm disciplined at doing that. Um, switch off. Uh, I have pretty much scheduled each week um, my exercise sessions, my yoga sessions. And again, that is time that not just in in, in my schedule, but I, we, I think the kids acknowledge, my husband acknowledges, I acknowledge that that is, I'm going to do it between then and then. Because it's so easy to say, I'll do exercise today. Well, today is a long time, but then it's no time. And then before you know it, it's bedtime and you haven't done it. So I think, I think that I, I, I hone those skills, as I said, playing footy, being a hobby at the beginning, playing football to becoming all consuming, but then wanting to kind of have my career alongside it. So I qualified as a teacher, um, was at uni for a lot of time playing football and had to juggle those things. So yeah, time management has been massive for me in not just in getting my prep done, some the work, the kids, but also about time to switch off. Um, I mean, I am so rubbish on social media, but that's because I don't allocate time for it. Um, I, it doesn't, I'm not particularly bothered about putting stuff on there, about looking on there, because for me, I, I feel like I don't have loads of time to juggle with. And so if I have got 10 minutes or I have got an hour, I want to use it on something that's going to be how, what I think will be more productive or something that will be better for me me scrolling on Twitter, it's, it's not really my thing. Um, and I'd rather do a, a box size or a yoga session with the hour that I schedule to myself. You're so yeah, organized, really Rachel. Listening I to Rachel. love it. Mm. Because I, I, I flip between the two. I've got the discipline of being an athlete and understanding that time management is key. But then I'm also a procrastination queen. So there is, there, like, there's no middle ground with me. There'll be days where I'm like, okay, you know what? This ain't gonna happen. I'm just gonna sit here. I'm gonna look at Instagram. All oh, this looks nice. Let me buy this, and that happens, you know. And I think you just but is have that. To not, do you not consider that as downtime as well, where you're sort yeah, of yeah, it is. Off. And, and and I think that that's quite important, you know. I mean, for some people that may be reading a book. Sometimes, you know, that is for me reading a book. Exercise is really important, Rachel. I completely take on board your point. You have to allocate that exercise time yeah. because if you say yet yeah, today I'm gonna work out, what time is that? because it's very, very easy for that time to run away and then that session doesn't get done. And that just starts a bit of a, a bit of a spiral effect that isn't always the best feeling. So it's about having those times scheduled and allocated. And that really, really works for me. Like when it comes down to the children, my kids are in bed by seven o'clock, sometimes 6.30 if they've been naughty. I'm like, right, we're going to bed. This <laughs> is a good excuse. Happen. You've been naughty kids. No, I haven't. Yes, you have, get to bed. <laughs> ben, and it's like, <laughs> But it was really important for me and my husband to have that boundary because we knew we needed our evenings to just to be able to decompress. And we saw exactly how much that meant to us, especially during the pandemic, because it was full on. So having that time to be able to schedule was absolutely critical. And back to Joe's question quickly about emails and WhatsApps. I've, I've moved my on my iPhone, my like social media icons and even my email icon, I've moved to the last, last screen. Mm. So I, if it pops up, I don't see it. I turn off my notifications. So I have to actively go in to have a look and see because- But not for WhatsApps people, though, no? For WhatsApps, WhatsApps everything's off. Well. Oh, really? Off. Yeah, Jackie, everything's off. Okay. Everything is off because what would happen is I'd get like a stupid group chat message from the girls or whatever it may be. Mm. And then that's 10 minutes. It just like, takes your attention, minutes, doesn't it? It takes my attention away. Yeah. So I'd rather go in. And another investment I'd say to everybody, if you can, and you've got a phone, buy an Apple Watch. Because then that also, if your phone's ringing or something comes up, it's a quick swipe away without having to grab the phone, which is such a massive, massive distraction. So I've had to look at things that I know work for me, that how my brain works, and just say, right, these are distractions. This keeps me on track. And that's kind of how... I'm able to, to manage my time as well. But my I think, I think that's a great tip actually, that WhatsApps, because 
as mums, we're all, not just us, but loads of people here aren't mums. And I'm sure you're on lots of groups with friends or work colleagues and what have you. And I find that a massive distraction. And during the course of my research into time management last week, there was something about the time that you ramp, that you need to ramp up to concentrating on something and the time afterwards to ramp down. But if you're getting distracted in between, you're adding so much more time because you then have to ramp back up mm. into that concentration. Um, so I think that might be a really good tip and I have taken off notifications. They might have come back on again since the weekend because I did a game yesterday. But I need to take them off again, good advice. But the WhatsApp, but then I worry that maybe it's one of my mum friends asking if I can pick up their child after school or something. So I don't like yeah. to not have it on in case it's important. But I think there's a very good setting. How I see it, Jackie, if it's mm. important, somebody pick up the phone and call you. That's how I see yeah. it. If it is yeah. that important, someone will ring you and be like, please can you? And one thing you can do on your WhatsApp, on your like, you know, like where it's um has a little description or notification, yeah. if important, please call me. Like just make people oh, aware yeah. of the boundaries. Mm -hmm. So that way there's no expectation on you to be constantly on. And that's where I find it quite challenging. Like I don't yeah. want to be on all the time. Like yeah. I'm human. I've yeah, and this is uh, this is one of our questions actually. Just to, you know, kind of reiterating what you all say. Like I also like exercise. I'd never used to exercise. I mean, honestly, I never did before I had kids. It was what once I had kids, I thought, oh my god, I, I need energy from somewhere. So I'm same as you guys, completely schedule that time, and that I actually consider as my me time. I feel like that's the only thing I actually genuinely do just for me and it's more it's not even aesthetic it's mental because it gives me that focus I'm also like you I don't have notifications it's interesting because I had um I had a conversation with someone recently who's a guy who works in our industry and he was just saying oh you know he's always stressed doesn't know how to manage and I just said you know what one thing I've really I said I don't know what will happen with you maybe you'll meet someone one day and they'll change your way of thinking and you'll want to put more focus on that maybe you'll get a new job somewhere that will take the focus elsewhere and you'll reassess your priorities and I said but for me I realized probably through my sort of I don't want to say negative experiences because you know the work experiences were good but I did find it difficult to juggle and I think through that those experiences where I felt that you know I, I gave a lot and I gave a lot of my personal time every other week but then the reward I didn't feel was as, as much. And I felt like I, I should have spoken up. But, but through that experience, one thing I learned was something that you touched on, Jeanette, was that, you know, personal relationships are above any job that I do. I really, really would not value my own people, my family and my friends above anything I do. On a, you know, on a day to day basis, of course, I have to prioritize whatever job I'm doing and I've got to give 100 percent. But in my mind. I know where my where my love is and I know where my priorities are. So that's how, personally how I do it. And it is in line with something that uh, one of the questions we've been asked by Emma Norris, who is saying that, you know, talking about the industry is far from being nine to five. She finds it difficult to have downtime. And I'm sure Emma, I don't think Emma has kids, which means that. So what she's saying is that I find it difficult to have downtime, usually out of a fear of being seen to be lacking in commitment, especially as a woman in football. So if you think about the fact that you might not have be in that you know sort of situation where you've got families to attend to but you want to you sort of need to be on hand 24 7 for any issues that might come up and if you want to switch off and have that downtime how on earth do you do that without people above you thinking that you're not committed to your job or you're not responding soon enough anyone have any opinions on that Rach is that something you sort of think is a is a thing or is it something that we're just afraid of and we should actually let go of um, I do think that it's potentially the latter, um, that it's something that you're preempting is a real problem, but actually have you chatted to anyone about it? Is it really a problem? You know, and, and actually are those expectations, if they are expectations, because you've maybe not asked to see if they are expectations, have you been available 24 seven? Are they fair? Are they realistic? And I know we're not a nine to five industry in sports, in football. That's just not the case. Um, I think, when I was um, before I had kids and when I was with football, but I was working as well, out of office on emails was always something that, you know, it just meant that I think the person, whoever, whoever contacted me knew that I was not going to be able to contact them back. And if I did, it was almost like you'd gone above and beyond sort of what was expected of you. Um, and I was quite comfortable. I got comfortable, not comfortable, but confident, should I say, with putting the out of office on. Uh, and, co and confident also as as uh, maybe 
uh, as Jackie mentioned there, confident and comfortable with saying no to things. So I think certainly early on in my playing career and um, and when I was getting asked to do interviews and then things, more and more things kind of came from that as I guess women's football became more popular, um, trying to juggle work, life um, and football, I had to become competent at saying no to things. Um, and I think once you start doing that, and it's not that I say no to absolutely everything it's not i just have to be selective about it knowing basically how much time how much energy i've got um so that i don't tip that balance you know i've got a medical condition that i have to be really conscious of how how much sleep i get um how much i'm looking after myself um and especially now that a majority of the time i'm on my own to be able to maintain my health because ultimately that has a massive knock-on effect of work and the kids it's all it's what Jeanette was saying if you're not right yourself as a, as a mum let's talk about in that sense then you are not going to be right for anybody else that's kind of what it all boils down to if you're a mum or not a mum you yeah, know exactly. you're not going you to be great at your job if you're not mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. I was just going to say, Joe Tung just sent me a text of her multitasking uh, time management. She's, um, I, I don't know if she's on a bike while watching this me webinar, so she's <laughs> exercising at the same time as watching this, <laughs> which is just brilliant. Right, we've got just sorry, just just going back to that point. Sorry, if I may. Um, I think we do put pressure on ourselves. I think we do probably think maybe as a woman in football, maybe we think, oh, do I need to be seen to be doing more? Mm. Personally, that's not something I've ever felt because I've always been told to do less. So I don't I de definitely don't feel like I need to put any pressure on myself in that regard. But so it's not a case of impressing somebody. From my point of view, it's more a case of wanting to be across everything in journalism, because when you're on air, you know, for example, when I was doing Sunday Supplement, I just wanted to have that sort of background of knowledge of what was going on so that I could pluck any file out of my brain when I needed it for any particular subject. Um, so personally, that is why I am on top of things all the time. When I've had babies, I've never switched off from, from sports news at all. I've always wanted to, but I think that's because I want to know so that when I work um, that I feel happier doing the job that I'm fully prepared um, but I think you need to take a little bit of what um, Jeanette said and a bit of what Rachel said as well in terms of compartmentalizing things so I'm going to try the WhatsApp thing I'm going to try it Jeanette um, but another tip must, there is Jackie is to... because nothing's that nothing's that important well, well my friend said this great quote to me he just said what, what was it something like nothing really matters does it Rich I was like that's true he goes and the rest doesn't matter at all but i was like but it yeah, does if you if, you know if you <laughs> if you're supposed to be not... doing something but if you don't no, have a schedule is, i don't it's... have a schedule I, every single yeah. day is completely different and there are about three different zooms in it for various different reasons and i think we mean for one. mental sanity it's just kind of you yeah know, but it's, it's all on one phone on i only have one phone <laughs> i can't really swap it for work and <laughs> so so one of the tips I think that, that somebody had, uh, I think Joe had actually, was to have separate phones as well, if you can. And somebody tweeted yeah. this morning, if you can for have separate one for work and for home life, I think that's a brilliant tip. Yeah. So anybody who's watching this that is able to do that, I think that's a great idea, particularly maybe early on in your, your career, if you can keep those separate. Mm. Okay, there's a, an interesting question here from Liz Ellen. She says, after, after having my daughter, I left an equity, equity partner role in a law firm to set up my own business because the freedom to work flexibly was critical to me. Then the pandemic hit and everyone was suddenly working from home, working fle flexibly as well. But do you think this new way of working will help or exacerbate equality issues in the medium or long term? So now that we're oh, all working great... flexibly at home, it's a great question, really, whether it kind of shows yeah. that well, everyone can do it or have women had it harder and now it's kind of almost watered down because everyone's doing it. I think, you know what, Reshman, I think, and Liz, that's a great question. I think there's a stat actually that shows that women are having it harder because we're, we're, we're at home and we're, we're accessible. And that therefore means that if you can see something needs doing in the home, as well as having to do your job, you will tend to whatever needs to be doing at home and do what you need to do at work as well. And I think that's where it sets out having boundaries. So I think in the medium to long term, potentially it might not actually be that much of a positive experience because what actually goes going into an office or going to work on site does, it does set those boundaries. And I think that that's key. So whatever way you can do that in the household, 
I think is super, super important, especially as we as we move on, because one thing that was causing a lot of the arguments in our house during the pandemic was just the division of labor in our house. And that that was the reality. We did a rotor, it still doesn't work. Do you know what I mean? I feel like you have to kind of work around how you, you are as a personality within your own household to see what the best things to do. Everyone's gonna be so unique in their circumstances and setups, but boundaries are absolutely critical, I think, in making those things work and just not having the resentment later on down the line that you're doing too much, because that, that's where it starts to get a little bit tricky, I think. Mm, I, I completely concur. And I think for me, I mean, I I wouldn't say I'm a control freak. I just, I just like things done in a certain way in my household. And I was absolutely the CEO of my household. When I would go away, I would do everything before I left. I would do laundry, I would cook. and um, make sure all the kids, everything was organized for them. The fridge was full before I left. And actually it was only afterwards I realized that like you were saying before, Jeanette, that you do have to be kind to yourself. And I had to say to myself, look, I can't physically do all of this. I used to do all of that before I'd even done my match prep, before I'd even packed, before I'd even thought about any of that. So I think it is um, definitely the division of labor is a massive, massive, massive thing for women as well. Um, there's a, communications a little... key with that though, isn't it? I think a yeah. lot of it comes back and, and it's the opposite Absolutely. in my house. I have to say it's my husband's the CEO of the house. He does yeah. everything domesticated and I'm much yeah. more sort of to, to do with children and prep, but it is much more a division of labor. But sorry, just quickly on Liz's point, I'm a lot more optimistic than Jeanette. I think actually it's really helped. I think it's helped men having time at home has made them realize actually they like more time at home. A lot of my um, friends locally who are men are usually work in the city that they're actually their bosses are happy for them to work more from home, which means they get to see more of their children. And I think it just helps with that whole division of labor. But I also agree with Jeanette though about the boundaries. And I think you have to put those in place with work as well, wherever possible. Mm, we've got a tip here, which is um, from Sue Anstis, I believe, um, which is, I've just read a brilliant book called Deep Work by Cal Newport. Hopefully we can send that out somewhere. Um, so that you all sort of have it, everyone on this call. So it's called Deep Work by Cal Newport that provides lots of great techniques for letting go of all that shallow superficial time spent on social media that we've all been talking about to find time to work on the valuable stuff. And I think, to be honest, I think that's sort of where it all lies, isn't it? It's sort of that epiphany that you all have when you are so busy, when it's thrown on you, that you do sort of work out what is valuable to you and what isn't and I think usually as I, I mean it feels like that in all of our circumstances we've had to come through a cycle to sort of get to the other end of that and I think um, whether you're sort of new in this industry or sort of where you know the four of us are I think it's almost like a rite of passage you just have to sort of go through it and it's the there are lots of things about our industry that need to change sort of um, I think some one of the questions was asking about this actually and I'm sorry I haven't been able to pick up on it because there are so many questions coming through and we haven't been able to talk about all of them but you know that it is low paid when you first start you know we're we're not all there as you know the Gary Lineker's earning the you know whatever it is he's earning you know we are trying to make it work as well even though from the outside people might think that it, it looks it's, it's a different scenario it's not you know we're all trying to make it work but I think we all come to that point where we realize that through adversity sometimes you just sort of or through challenges well not adversity but through certain challenges we've all sort of come to the other end and sort of found what is our thing that makes it work um has anyone out of our three panelists anyone quickly just if you had to sort of sum it up in one sentence or maybe two what is your sort of final tip for not just mothers of course you know the focus has been a lot on that but in terms of just finding that work-life balance that we've all had to sort of, um, I don't know, unpick somehow in a sentence or two, Jeanette, starting with you. I think, you know what? I just think just be kind to yourself and set your boundaries because that's the best version of you. And once you've got the best version of you, you're amazing at work, you're amazing in the home or wherever it is outside of work. So absolutely just be kind to yourself. Just don't be too hard. It's been a really tough 18 months. Let's just take stock of that and just remember where we're at. Jackie? Uh, communication with partner in particular to make sure that you each know where you stand and you're each happy with how things are going because I think communication is absolutely massive and things can really break down when you don't communicate properly um, and also um, diarising things so whilst as I you know admitted my issues with sort of the constant pings and the constant uh, all the admin that I have to do I think planning is, is huge and looking at my diary at the start of the week and 
sometimes being a bit scared by the number of things that are in it, but actually making sure that I schedule time for exercise or to go for a walk with a friend. That's been brilliant during lockdown or to go for a bike ride, uh, whatever it is, making sure you do schedule in some fun stuff around the work. Rach? Yeah, pretty much a combination of those two. Be kind to yourself. Uh, it's absolutely scheduling, you know, being disciplined with that, as disciplined as we are with our preparation and our research that we do going into our work. Be disciplined with scheduling that downtime and that time to unwind, to decompress, as we said. Uh, Recognising communication within a relationship is huge. I've only recently realised that my husband is not psychic, that when I think... He should know these things and he should do these things. Um, if I tell him, it makes life a lot, a lot more easy. Um, and I think uh, finally is, is don't be um, restrained or, or uh, sorry, restricted or worried about things you can't control. Um, I think when talked about worrying about, we talked about glass ceilings in the past, we worried about you know, what people expect of us just give yourself a little bit of a break. Do they actually exist? Can we do anything about it? If we can, go for it. If we can't, don't waste your energy on it. Yeah, I absolutely concur, actually, because of all the energy that I've given in traveling and everything else I do, I really, I maybe it's just the point in life I'm at, I don't care what anyone else thinks. I really want to conserve my energy for myself because of all the things that I need to do and how much my kids need me. So I completely concur with all of that. And I, like I said, I feel like we all sort of reach these epiphanies because of the various challenges that we we overcome or whatever it might be. Um, I really think we could talk for hours. And, you know, I hope this was something that was open to everyone because, we, you know, we're obviously very conscious of the fact that we are all mothers but we really hope that you all have you know taken some tips as well if we were indeed able to provide anything that could be of use to you as well so thank you Jeanette Quatre, thank you Jackie Oatley thank you Rachel Brown Finnis and uh, I'm going to hand to Jackie to close yeah thanks and controlling the controllables I think is a big thing that throughout our lives children no children um whatever it is we can control then great then do something about it but if it's out of your hands if it's how people view you or what have you then let it go as much as you can just draw the line and just deal with what you can deal with but uh thanks to everyone for taking part um do give us your feedback on the webinar at events at womeninfootball.co.uk also if you have other ideas for webinars if you'd like another one that's specifically even more so tailored to um, mums or to motherhood in football maybe should we have a separate breakout session of women who are thinking of becoming mums that's maybe struck me as something that might be an option where you guys might want to chat to each other within a webinar format um, of um, those of you who are thinking about it but a bit worried about uh, how to go about it um, I'm sure we all don't mind being contacted if you'd like to sort of chat off piste if you like about um, about the issues we've all faced I certainly don't mind at all if you want to follow on Twitter or email um, then do so and we can continue this debate after this session if and when you fancy it we'll be running plenty more events over the next few weeks and months so do check out the womeninfootball.co.uk website check your social media sessions but only during that specified time that you're supposed to be looking at social media if you're trying to manage your time a little better so thank you also to Laura and to Louise who've been involved in the planning of this session and we look forward to seeing you next time thanks again <laughs>